Thank you so much, you three and uh, Rosemary and Anamorous. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the top eight of the Vancouver Regional Championships. My name is Maeve Rourke. I am once again joined by Scott Glaza. You guys, we have a really good match of one trainer who's been on stream a couple of times and one trainer who has eluded us throughout the past few days. Yeah, we're hoping you will be enamored with our choice, but we will have the uh, Aaron Zhang versus Neil Patel match. Uh, I'm really excited to see who comes up on top of this one. And also just all of the other things. I don't know how he balances it all. I am just genuinely impressed every single time that I get to talk to him. Yeah, it's to me is one of those uh, time turner things. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's been really impressive. I think we talked about it a little bit when he was first on stream, but I think it really is difficult to jump back and forth with commentary and for playing where like the type of knowledge you need is a little bit different so that the prep is really different. Um, you know, and the fact that he's been able to uh, continue to be so strong as a commentator and a content creator while uh, also battling so well. I think really speaks to how talented and smart he is and how much work he's put in. You know, it doesn't just happen. Even if you are really knowledgeable about the game, right, you still have to put in the hours. You know, Neil here on the left, Aaron on the right. Aaron has been in the right seat all weekend. I wonder if that is a comfort choice for him. Neil Patel, Achievement 2023 Vancouver Regional Top 8. Yeah, We're remember, here right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, I remember that tournament. I think I, I like that one. Yeah, I, you know, I've been enjo I enjoyed it. I thought the stream was great. <laughs> Don Doza, Glamora, Tatsugiri, Iron Bundle, Great Tusk, and Dragonite. Lots of Pokemon we have already seen before this weekend. The Dragonite's a really cool pick with this team. That is the Pokemon that's running Tailwind over something like Talonflame. Yeah, it's a little bit different than the team we saw before. You know, a lot of similar faces. I know Palmot this time, unfortunately, but um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see kind of the differences in how he chooses to play versus the game we saw last round. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of, I think the Glamora is such an interesting Pokemon, and I'm sure Aaron now has probably had a lot of time playing it. When it came up from Yuki's team, it was a very much more popular choice than versus the team that Emilio was running when Emilio ran it. I think people found that the way that Yuki had prepared that team was something that was far more functional for them in their matchups. Aaron Zhang, look at those achievements. National champion, regional champion times five, world's top four, 2013, 10 years ago, 2012, world's top eight. Just uh, squeaking past you there a little bit there, Scott. Yeah, a little bit better. Just a little bit. Uh, I mean, I, I mean I will, yeah, I'll put an asterisk. I mean, an awful lot of these were in the senior division, Aaron. No, I, he's <laughs> uh, one of the best players of all time. I think kind of no question. Uh, you see his team there. Uh, interesting spin on a popular archetype. I do think that that's a, another cool element of what Aaron's done, right? Where uh, and I guess something that I think you may learn from the way he's approached this tournament where, you know, uh, you know, maybe one shortcut he took is he didn't invent the core, right? And you don't need to do that. But he did put a twist on it, both to fit the metagame in a way that he thinks is more appropriate and also to suit him as a player better, right? You know, he went through, was like, all right, you know, I like the ideas that these players had, but I think this will work better for me. And I think that's just a really important skill to pick up if you want to have success at tournaments like this one. Trainers, we are getting right into the action for top eight. Aaron leading Baxcalibur and Fluttermane, whereas Neil is leading Glamora and Iron Bundle. Uh, so uh, somewhat similar to what we saw in the last round, you can see the Glamora lead for the Dondoso side. Uh, I'm interested in Aaron's leads. I believe the guide on this team, uh, like the original pace, suggests leading Talonflame. We don't see that here. So Aaron already showing uh, his creativity, you know, uh, switching up the game plan a little bit. You have to wonder exactly how much preparation they have for some sort of matchup like this. I think Glamora Dondoso was something a lot of trainers came and prepared for this weekend. And so Aaron not sending out Talonflame for any sort of speed control is an interesting choice. I think it does kind of put you in a position where you may feel more more comfortable to go for something like the Terrastalize on Baxcalibur, but knowing if Dondozo is in the back, that doesn't feel great. You know, Baxcalibur is just kind of in an awkward position because this Iron Bundle can still do, you know, a pretty decent amount of damage to it. Yeah, I think uh, Iron Bundles on both sides of the uh, team are going to have some threats here, but there's a lot of things that they can do a lot of damage to on both teams, but also nearly every Pokemon on both teams are threatening a lot of damage back. So uh, seeing if either side can get any value out of their bundle should be interesting. Fluttermane switching out here, bringing in the Brute Bonnet for Aaron Zhang, a Pokemon that I think can do a lot of damage here if need be. A Terrastalization on Aaron's side into that Bax Caliber will be that ground Terra typing. May be able to go for something like a big Earthquake here if it wants that extra damage and try and get that knockout, maybe knowing that that can handle a couple of big hits from the Pokemon on the opposite side of the field. Iron Bundle protecting this turn, though. No offensive output on that side. You know, Neil has this Glamora as well, who's going to take this big Earthquake. Will hit into your own partner Pokemon in Brute Bonnet, but Brute Bonnet's probably one of the few Pokemon that you wouldn't mind hitting with your own Earthquake here. And getting this damage down onto Glamora is absolutely huge. Enough for the knockout. You are not getting poisoned on turn one. Yeah, no mortal spin this time. Uh, we do see the uh, toxic debris going down. So uh, in the future, Pokemon and Aaron's side will be poisoned when they switch into battle. Uh, one difference between Aaron's team and the team we saw last round, you know, uh, this is not the regular Amoongus. This is the uh, prehistoric version. Uh, thought that poison typing not able to clean up those entry hazards. 
Don Dozo switching in here. And yeah, that Brew Bonnet's actually Terra Water, interestingly enough, right? So it's not exactly the Terra Poison that could switch in that you and I saw yesterday on stream. Yeah, so now with Don Dozo out here, you know, uh, predictably last Pokemon, uh, spoilers, it's Tatsugiri. Wow. Um, the Grass Terra type that will make this a little bit trickier. Uh, you know, Brute Bonnet is one of the kind of like the standard Pokemon to use in this matchup because it's so strong against uh, Don Dozo before it terastalizes. Uh, I don't know what Aaron's last Pokemon is yet. I think the, the recommendation is Iron Bundle, mm -hmm. who uh, will be very effective against a grass type Dondozo. Yeah, I mean, you still have the ice type moves as well from the Baxcalibur if you really are truly feeling it. Brute Bonnet is the Pokemon that's holding the loaded dice. Sometimes Baxcalibur is one of the Pokemon that does hold it, but it does have access to Bullet Seed. Iron Bundle switching out here. I'm going to bet that this might be that uh, Tatsugiri if we're looking for it. And yeah, there it is. Tatsugiri here setting up this commander right here at the start of our top eight. Once again, getting a plus two boost to all of its stats here. And that is probably going to be pretty helpful if you're trying to deal with some big Pokemon on the other side, Aaron could just be looking for a free switch. Yeah, I mean, he could. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, though, I mean, uh, certainly an Earthquake is going to knock out both of these Pokemon. At least one of them should get a nice swing here if they want it. But instead, this, yeah, Excalibur uh, choosing to fight another day. Yeah, sending in that Iron Bundle for Aaron. Not exactly the uh, the bulkiest of Pokemon here and will begin to take some poison damage every single turn. Thanks to that Toxic Debris set up by that Glamora. But no, it is now that Quark Drive as well. So Quark Drive going to at least boost that speed. You don't have any sort of way to remove these boosts. Brute Bonnet also going to switch. So a double switch here from Aaron, going to bring that Fluttermane back out onto the field. Yeah, as we said in the days when Aaron played, the first time it is a revolving door of Pokemon out in the field. <laughs> that is that is still, I'm sure, on a bingo card somewhere, right? Either way. <laughs> looks Check. like Free the... space, I gave it to you. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Neil going for this Terrastalization on that Dondozo. Terra Grass is a great way to maybe try and get some big damage off. Most importantly, you may not get uh, some spores from the Brute Bonnet. They really changes this matchup. Otherwise, both the Spore and the Bullets are just devastating. Yeah, Wave Crash into the Iron Bundle, not very effective. Does take over half of that damage. Dondoza taking a little bit of recoil in retaliation. No damage from Aaron's side, though, because of the double switch. Yeah, I mean, uh, interesting position now. Both these Pokemon threatening a decent amount of damage to the Dondozo. Um, a little bit scary in the sense that you'd assume an Earthquake from this Dondozo would be enough to finish off the uh, Iron Bundle if he wants to use it. So he kind of like, doesn't need to target into that slot, even if his goal is to knock it out. Um, you know, there is the option of then trying to switch uh, the Iron Bundle back out, kind of take advantage maybe of an Earthquake that doesn't knock out anything. But, you know, uh, Aaron's done a lot of switching so far, not really putting any damage down on this Dondozo. You know, this is certainly a Pokemon you can't afford to play with for very long. You know, with all those boosts from that command, um, it is very powerful. I almost wonder, right, if Aaron needs to game plan to try and get a spore down onto Dondozo before Tatsugiri comes onto the field, but that is a hard call to make, right, especially with that Dondozo just being so threatening with that Grass Terra. Encore, though, into the Dondozo, going to lock that into Wave Crash instead of Earthquake, meaning you cannot get that double knockout. Moonblast into Dondozo doesn't do a whole lot of damage thanks to those moves, but Wave Crash now you have targeted and you hit the Flutter Main instead of that Iron Bundle, so Iron Bundle could still go for something like a freeze dry. Yeah, really well, uh, really well played by Aaron there. You know, now does the Iron Bundle get that Encore, which is kind of frustrating for the Dondozo, but like, uh, you can't really do anything for Dondozo, right? You aren't allowed to switch out of battle. That is one of the negative effects of the Commander ability. Uh, Iron Bundle, you know, looking at a position where it probably wasn't going to get to see many turns anyway, mm -hmm. but you will get that freeze dry off uh, really nicely played. You know, Aaron was talking about how much he liked uh, Encore on that Iron Bundle, where you know, Hydro Pump is a little bit more common, but he was mentioning it's kind of just been fantastic for him all tournament long. One of a bunch of games, he didn't really feel like having Hydro Pump would have helped him in any, and maybe uh, Encore will be just what he needs to move on to the semifinals. That's a really smart play as well, right? Because you at least now have set yourself up in a position where you know what's going to happen and maybe you can play around it. Baxcalibur is still a Pokemon that could take some super effective damage from a wave crash, and that becomes a little bit more difficult, but do you rather take the knockout on the Iron Bundle? Yeah, it's a good time to know your calcs, right? Uh, you know, if he needs the Ice Shard, perhaps to help a uh, freeze drive with the knockout, he could take it. If he doesn't need it instead, firing uh, two Ice type attacks right now, uh, one knocking out the Dondozo and the other wacky the Taki Tatsugiri would be fantastic. So uh, we'll see how prepared Aaron is. But, you know, uh, a trader of his caliber, uh, I'm going to guess that he's thought just a little bit about the Dondozo matchup. That man is really good at thinking, and this Ice Shard into Dondozo does do a lot of damage. Freeze Drive from the Iron Bundle as well into the Dondozo. Does not get the knockout, though. Is going to have this Wave Crash targeting down and will knock itself out from recoil, but not before knocking out that Bax Caliber first. 
You know, at least he gets it on Doza, but that's a huge knockout. That full health affects Caliber going down, and this game stays very close. And now, right, Aaron only has that Brute Bonnet in the back, and Brute Bonnet into Tatsugiri may feel a little bit more comfortable, but you still have to then deal with the threat of that Iron Bundle on the opposite side. Both of them are holding booster energy. There is a really good chance for a speed tie here. Yeah, and you got to keep in mind, too, the uh, Iron Bundle on Aaron's side of the field not looking so good. Uh, I believe it only has one more turn before that Poison will knock it out. So uh, if Aaron's going to win this one, he's going to have to make something happen fast. And, you know, at this point, you can click Rage. Uh, actually, not Rage Powder here, but you can try and go for something like a Spore if that's the end game you want to wrap up. Brute Bonnet will begin to also be on this timer. Iron Bundle, if it wants to make a move, it's got to make it. You probably have a free target knowing it's not going to protect with the damage output it needs to make. Absolutely. Another thing to keep in mind here, too, that Tatsugiri is Choice Scarf, so it will not be able to protect, just you know, stall out the poison of uh, Iron Bundle. So Aaron does get one turn to try to make something happen here, uh, you know, with the very uh, high probability that one Pokemon on the other side of the field is going to be using Protect. This is such a close end game, which is so unique to see, right? Having both of these trainers felt really back and forth this entire game, and now you've kind of come down to the wire. Iron Bundle will be protecting this turn. Pretty comfortable call when you can just let that poison do the work for you. Iron Bundle's freeze dry into the Tatsugiri, though. Will connect, will get that one hit knockout. A absolutely great way to begin to put damage down. Unfortunately, uh, no Pollen Puff for this sort of uh, uh, mungus like creature mm. instead of having to attack into the Protect. No damage output there, but showing that it went for the Bullet Seed, and I think, you know, at this point, Iron Bundle is is so close to uh, to wrapping up this victory here for Neil. It just needs to get that damage off, but uh, things might get a little complicated. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's another good time to know your couch, right? I guess uh, neither side really having too many decisions to make. You know, uh, the freeze dry into the Bullet Seed. Certainly, Bullet Seed is going to pick up a knockout if Brute Bonnet's able to attack, but will this be a knockout? Freeze dry into the Brute Bonnet. It's not enough to get the knockout, actually. Brute Bonnet going for this Bullet Seed. It's holding loaded dice, so it only will need to probably get those four hits that it would be mandated to get. Yeah, two and then three right here. Yep, 4 HP, very comfortably able to get that knockout, and that is going to seal game one for Aaron Zhang. A really beautiful play game there. It's just so close, a game befitting the quarterfinals of this great tournament, but Aaron able to come out on top there, and now just a game away from moving on to the semifinals. That was really great. That was so nuts. I love, I love Pokemon at this high level with so much thought from both of these trainers. Things are coming down to just the smallest of margins. Aaron really played that so well without even having to worry too much about having that speed advantage. Just took the time to handle Dondozo, even if you were still taking some damage. And that shows why Encore Iron Bundle can be so unique. You could still lock a move that does damage onto you, but if it's only doing damage onto one Pokemon, it's better than two. Yeah, it's, it's sort of a creative way to end that game, right? Where uh, it's not the way that it was, uh, you know, the, the, the version of the team that uh, he started with could handle that, right? I mean, Encore wasn't even on that version of the Iron Bundle. Uh, he deals with things his own way, you know? Uh, I really enjoyed that game, obviously very close. You know, there's a handful of turns in that match. It seemed they could have flipped the game either way. Uh, it seemed like perhaps that Endoza surviving was going to be one of those turns, right? You know, uh, if Aaron has that Vax Caliber for the rest of the game, uh, it's very clean, right? right. So uh, both sides have to figure out now, well, you know, we could play the same game with the same eight Pokemon and probably have a very different result, um, you know, based on our decisions or even damage rolls. So I think it's a tough one to prepare for, especially given the stakes of the match, right? Yeah, I mean, if, if Talonflame came to that game, would things have been different with that speed advantage, you know, versus having to, you know, deal with the Dondozo? I think Vax Caliber, like you said, losing that definitely swung the game back in Neil's favor. He was truly just a critical hit away from wrapping that game for himself. And we've seen quite a lot of uh, interesting RNG happen this weekend. You know, Aaron as well. I can see why he wouldn't pick Hydro Pump. You want to pick something that'll do something every single turn. But uh, that Encore is a really cool technique. And it does help quite a lot into Pokemon on the opposite side. Yeah, um, I, I think it was, it was pretty interesting too, right? Where you know, it looks a little bit weird in the situation. Like, are you just opting to not do damage with a Pokemon that can deal a lot of it in order to take more damage in return? But uh, you know, it's where that damage is distributed is what mattered, right? He didn't really need the Flutter Main anymore. It wasn't too big of a loss. And the recoil damage from the Wave Crash ended up being uh, a pretty big deal in that game. Uh, I think one other thing that was a big deal in that game was that very first turn. Um, you know, it seemed like, in a way, Aaron didn't get a ton of his Terrestrialization, right? Because it didn't matter after turn one. Uh, but he just wiped out the Glamour immediately, right? It was like never really in the game, never got the chance to move. Um, you know, uh, even with that happening, the poison damage was pretty significant in that game. So it'll be interesting 
interesting in the second game if Neil is as willing to give it up so easily, um, assuming he chooses to bring it a second time. Yeah, Glamora was a Pokemon that felt like a non-factor to us because we only saw it for a little bit of time. Its biggest factor was the poison that it was doing every single turn. But if it can do poison plus more chip damage every turn or something like a power gem could be absolutely huge. Mortal Spin would be nice as well. Talonflame back Excalibur though. Talonflame coming out in game two with Glamora and Iron Bundle. So very speedy leads here. Yeah, I mean, uh, Talonflame, you know, the Pokemon that we didn't see last game, maybe we were expecting to. So Aaron having the Tailwind option this time. On the other side of the field, a uh, familiar looking combination of Pokemon. One thing to keep in mind with the Iron Bundle being led again. Uh, it was pretty relevant late in that game that the booster energy for Iron Bundle was consumed. You know, it switched in and out. And we could see the same thing happen here, right? Where if the Iron Bundle face off at some point in the game, uh, that is a disadvantage. Yeah, absolutely. It, it does, you know, this Glamora is also going to send back. I think Neil understands how important it is to maybe preserve that later. Don Dozo coming in would take something like an Earthquake a lot better. Talonflame click and Tailwind this turn, though. No Terrastalization turn one from Aaron on that Bax Caliber. Iron Bundle goes for Hydro Pump, and it does avoid on that Talonflame, and that is the one tough thing about having moves without that 100% accuracy. Icicle Crash into the Don Dozo doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but that feels pretty comfortable for Aaron. Yeah, I mean, I think you're uh, pretty happy with that turn if you're Aaron, probably. I mean, as we saw on um, the last round, actually, you know, not the worst thing in the world sometimes for Talonflame just to be deleted, but I do think in this game, Aaron probably wants to maintain having, uh, you know, four Pokemon a little bit longer if he can. So uh, definitely not the worst spot to uh, dodge what would have been a very damaging Hydro Pump. Yeah, it would have probably done enough onto that Talonflame, but now Talonflame still at full HP, still has Gale Wings active, can still do a lot of damage with a Brave Bird into either one of these slots. Don is gonna switch out here though, not getting partnered up with Tatsukiri just yet, also trying to stay a little bit healthier, a much more positional game plan from Neil this turn. Talonflame's Brave Bird though will go first into the Iron Bundle, does just under 50% of that HP, taking some recoil damage and retaliation. Hydro Pump this turn will connect though onto that Talonflame, enough for that knockout, not letting that happen a second time, meaning this Baxcalibur is still going to be able to get some big damage off depending on who it targets. That Glaive Rush there into the Iron Bundle, definitely enough to get that knockout, no longer a threat. Yeah, it's a pretty problematic Pokemon from Aaron's side. You know, we haven't yet to see it uh, really do too much of this matchup, but good to get it out of the way. And, you know, also simplifying this game for Aaron a little bit, right? He wants to get down to the point where he's just dealing with the Dondozo. Uh, it's one last Pokemon that could potentially be decided to worry about now. And uh, it was sort of a nice position the last turn, too. You know, uh, they're moving so quickly to get a chance to talk about it too much. But um, Talon Flame surviving is a big deal. You know, you can't just let Dondozo get burned for free. Uh, so there's really almost no choice but to protect or switch out there. Uh, it just it would, it would have been potentially a tournament throwing move from Neil, right? Uh, Aaron got quite a bit of value there, even though like the trade doesn't seem like it was fantastic. Iron Bundle switching in here, Dondozo switching in for Neil. Iron Bundle is probably the happiest this little penguin has been all weekend. It, with this quirk drive active, you still have that priority. The thing though is if this backs caliber, you know, it cannot protect, I believe. So it could be taking double damage from a Glaive Rush uh, second turn effect. Yeah, I mean, if it wants to avoid that, you know, it could use the Ice Shard, although it's not looking really good here, especially if Dondozo does not choose to terrestrialize. You know, either way for Dondozo, it's going to be taking uh, boosted damage from that Freeze Dry, so uh, not a whole lot of incentive to uh, use the terrestrialization this time. Yeah, especially right for that box color, where you could switch it in and out as well if you aren't thinking Ice Shard, depending on whatever Aaron and Zhang has in the back. If it is something like that uh, Brute Bonnet, which we saw in last game, would definitely make a lot of sense. But I think it depending on depending on where you want your damage output, the Flutter Main also does kind of add up. I think Brute Bonnet, now that you've gotten rid of the uh, of the um, the Iron Bundle on one side, makes it a little bit different, right? Bax Caliber though is going to switch out, revealing the final Pokemon Aaron's side of the field is that Brute Bonnet is not going to love possibly taking some. Some, uh, some big damage later on from something like the Glamora, but it does at least handle a wave crash pretty well. Tatsugiri switching in here. Once again, Neil setting up this commander ability with his Dondozo and going to at least try and get those boosts. You are still gonna take that big damage though from the freeze dry. Yeah, a nice fight for Aaron this time too. Uh, critically not activating the ability of Glamora. No yes. poison Pokemon this time. Yeah, it wasn't technically like a contact move right there with that Earthquake. Iron Bundle though, just gonna protect this turn. Probably a nice way to kind of bait out and see exactly what ended up happening. Dondozo's Earthquake not going to connect onto the Iron Bundle. Will hit onto this Brute Bonnet. Brute Bonnet, we saw that this handled this pretty comfortably as well when it took it from its own partner in that last game. It's just Brute Bonnet. It's not as bulky as its, uh, as its future counterpart in Amoongus, but it's 
it still does just fine. Yeah, and it's typing is a little bit better for this situation. And now you're in an interesting spot for Aaron, right? Where um, he probably doesn't really want to eat a bunch of earthquakes, but if he wants to, he could just choose to uh, encore Dondozo into this. Uh, but have a very difficult time breaking through the brute bonnet, who uh, is actually in a pretty good situation now. Yeah, I mean, it, you still have Bax Caliber in the back, right? Your brute bonnet, even it's it's probably if you're like terribly worried about a couple of different options, you still could kind of switch that in. You could preserve your uh, your Terra typing on maybe the Iron Bundle and just try and get that boost. You don't feel like you need to lock it in right now on that Bax Caliber because ground Terra typing is not going to do a whole lot for you. Yeah, and Bax Caliber was a good save, and he does still at some point need to deal with like Lamora, right? You know, it hasn't been a problem yet, but um, it is certainly capable of knocking Pokemon on its own. You know, Bax Caliber threatening that Earthquake in the back, so Varen can deal with this Dondozo. He's in really good shape. Yeah, Aaron going to Terrasilize this turn. That Iron Bungle Bundle is Terra Ice. Actually, sorry, Terra Grass there, which is really still nice to have. You will not be taking uh, as much damage from something like a Terra Blast if that was the move choice being pulled out by the Terra Grass Dondozo, which looks like is also going to match that Terrastalization. Yeah, and it also makes it very scary if he did choose to go through the Encore. Aaron would now yeah. have it locked in with two Pokemon that resist ground-type attacks. Yeah, that would be absolutely huge for Aaron, right? And it shows that this Iron Bundle with Encore is pretty problematic, and Neil needs to find a way to handle it. But nope, Encore first thing. You are now locking yourself into a double target move, unlike last game where you locked yourself out of a double target move, but Bullet Seed first. This isn't going to do a whole lot of damage, whether it hits four or five times. But honestly, any chip down onto this Dondozo is going to be helpful for that Iron Iron Bundle to also match damage with Freeze Dry. Yeah, I like that move by Aaron. You know, he did get a whole lot of damage out of it, but if Dundozo had not terastalized there, we would probably be looking at the good game screen. Yeah, it does hit five times there, Dundozo's Earthquake. Once again, we saw that this did probably 10%, maybe 15 onto the Brute Bonnet, and Iron Bundle handles that like a champ. Now he's gonna see as well a little bit of leftovers recovery from Dondozo, but here is where the Iron Bundle, I think, gets its turn to shine. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, an important thing to keep in mind here, uh, Dondozo isn't able to switch while it has that uh, Tatsugiri hanging out with it. So even though it has all those boosted stacks, uh, stats or attacks, uh, you know, uh, it has to keep using Earthquake because of Encore, and both these Pokemon resist those attacks now. Um, you know, uh, Iron Bundle, not uh, famously the most defensively powerful Pokemon, but when... It could have uh, fooled me. Yeah, exactly. In this scenario, uh, Aaron's found it. He's broken the system. He found a scenario where Iron Bundle can actually take some hits, and it's going to dish them out even better. Yeah, I, feel, I, I think that this Iron Bundle is probably really, really comfortable right now. You can just click Encore later. You're still faster, even with that Commander Boost from the Tatsugiri, because you're holding that booster energy, you're just going to outspeed it every single time, right? And you don't even have to worry about it. So you can click Freeze Dry right now into Dondozo. You can see how much damage that does. It doesn't do a whole lot. We saw that crit knock out Dondozo a couple of rounds ago. Earthquake, though, targeting into both of these Pokemon. They're going to need to take, I think, three more of those. Do you see the crunch coming down? Uh, not doing a whole lot of damage. I guess one of the reasons why Bullet Seed was very much fine, uh, despite it not being super effective on uh, the previous turn, right? It's not like he gave up a whole lot of damage there, but uh, you know, Dondoza is slowly being worn down. The thing to keep in mind here, though, like as good as the situation looks for Aaron, uh, it doesn't look like Dondoza is probably going to knock out either of these Pokemon, but is going to weaken both of them significantly. This game is far from over. Yeah, absolutely. And you have a move like Muddy Water on that Tatsugiri in the back, which really having chip damage would be huge. Another freeze dry plus this earthquake here. Once again, these turns feeling a little bit mapped out. It might actually only be two because of that critical hit on the Brute Bonnet, which would be huge. Crunch once again, it gets it so, so close. You will get that leftovers recovery, but Dondozo will at least be knocked out next turn. So you could target with a Bullet Seed into the Tatsugiri with the Iron Bundle. Yeah, I mean, I, so we have an interesting spot. So the Encore ends here. Um, your temptation here might be to try to protect in order to get more leftovers recovery. Uh, pretty obvious what would happen if that occurs, though. And says so we, we see the freeze dry, and uh, poor Tatsugiri is going to have to take an attack here. Poor Tatsugiri is going to either have to take an attack, or it could get spored right out of the gate and just immediately lose any offensive pressure that it has. Once we saw Aaron do this earlier, and yeah, there is the spore onto the Tatsugiri. Tatsugiri does actually have sleep talk. So it's not the end of the world for Tatsugiri. Yeah, this is a very interesting situation. Yeah, the Tatsugiri can no longer choose what attack it uses, uh, which could be very critical if it, at some point in this game winds up facing down that Baxcalibur. But, uh, you know, it is a strange spot now for Aaron. Uh, yeah, that Iron Bundle is very quick, though, and uh, could make uh, a big difference here, even if it only gets one more attack off. I think if you're Tatsugiri, what do you want to use if you use Sleep Talk? Maybe Icy Wind might be able to help you here, but Freeze Dry into the Tatsugiri, it's enough for the one-hit knockout, so not even needing to worry too much about those shenanigans with free, with uh, Sleep Talk there. Glamora going for the Sludge Bomb here into the Brute Bonnet, enough for that knockout, but this still sends in this Baxcalibur, and Baxcalibur has access to priority moves. 
Yeah, access to priority moves also has uh, access to Earthquake, which that Glamora is not going to enjoy. Uh, this is a very healthy looking Vexcalibur, and uh, Iron Bundle's already showing how well it can take Earthquakes itself. Uh, hard to see a way out of uh, this one for Neil. Yeah, Encore from the Iron Bundle, definitely a pretty nice move here to lock Sludge Bomb down onto a Pokemon that is not going to take that nearly as uh, nearly too bad. Earthquake from the Vexcalibur, though, this was a one hit knockout with the Terrastalization, does not have one this turn. Iron Bundle still able to hang on here, thanks to that terrestrialization really kind of paying dividends in the end game. Yeah, I mean, we really see the power of that. I mean, uh, it's another interesting choice. You know, Iron Bundle is going to faint a hero. Uh, I think its impact on this battle is clear, but uh, it's another great team building choice by Aaron, right? You know, uh, much more frequently, you see the Ice Terra type for damage, or usually Ghost is the defensive yes. Terra type. Uh, Grass probably the third most common uh, Terra type, but uh, really seeing its value there. I don't know how he wins this game without it. Yeah, Glamora's locked into Sludge Bomb right now. You need a you need a lot of uh, big damage here, but nope, not even going to matter with that uh, priority Ice Shard. That is the game for both of these trainers. Aaron will move on to top four, continuing his dominant run this weekend. Neil Patel finishes with a very strong top eight as well. Definitely showing a lot of Canadian pride with these trainers this weekend. Absolutely.